Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk to you about my salary. So I'm not going to beat around the bush on this one. It's 36k and basically you can switch off this video right now. But if you want to hear more about it, then stick around. Okay, are you still there? Well, the first thing that I want to say is if you're looking to be a pharmacist, for money then do not come to this country and be a pharmacist maybe in america or canada or in places like that you might have a really good salary but if you're thinking about coming to england to be a pharmacist for the money then this is not the right job for you so i literally get requests all the time about how much my salary is obviously because it's such a touchy topic you would think that not a lot of people ask but everyone under the sun asks i'd say i get at least two or three emails a week asking me. Yeah, it's a very popular question. And I feel like I am always in the sharing attitude. I feel like if there's information that should be known, then I wanna share it. So I don't wanna lie. And I want people who are looking into pharmacy as a career to actually know what they're getting into, which is why I'm filming this. I'm not gonna speak about other people's salaries, such as those in industry or community per se. I'm literally just gonna talk about my salary, what I get, and what I've been offered and stuff like that. I guess one thing that's different about my salary and everyone else's is that the NHS salaries are published online as well. So there's less capacity to be secretive about it. I just want to be honest with you guys and just share. So here I am. So I'm gonna to talk to you about what it is, what the take home salary is, some considerations about the salary and how to increase it. Okay, so as a newly qualified band six pharma, like hospital pharmacist, what you can expect is a salary of around 31,000 pounds annually. But I personally am working in central London, so I get the inner London weightings or something like that. And I think it's about 5,000 extra. So you're kind of looking at it as a, probably a ballpark figure of about 36,000 pounds a year annual salary as a junior pharmacist. Obviously every year this does go up, not by very much, but it does. If I'm actually honest with you, I never thought about salary until this year trying to get a mortgage which is not going very well so far. But yeah, I've generally just been really grateful for the job and very grateful I have a job, proud of working for the NHS. And you know, I'm an advocate for pharmacy as a career, but when they told me that on my salary, I won't be able to afford a mortgage for a one bed flat in London, that really, you know, hurt my feelings. I think it's enough, but is it enough given that every day there's a level of anxiety where a mistake that you make at work could lead to someone dying? I'm not sure, you know? That's something that you personally should assess. Okay, so the take home salary that you can expect on 36K is approximately two grand a month. So if you work it out, 36K divided by 12 is about 3,000. So you would think that about three grand would reach your bank account by the end of the month. But for me personally, I am paying for my pension, I'm paying for a student loan, there's national insurance. So after all of that has been taken into consideration, the actual take home salary is about two grand, which uh, I guess could be a lot. But when you're living in London and paying rent, I'd say my life is, it's comfortable, yeah, but it's not, it's not, it's not what's the word trying to be really careful here. It's not like I can save a lot, basically, is what I'm trying to say. If you can manage on that salary and you can save, then can you please teach me because I need some saving tips. Okay, so now we're moving on to considerations. And the first thing is that the job is actually rewarding. So although we don't earn as much as those, for example, in finance, some of my friends are on like 60, 70K, given that we're saving lives, you might think that it's not fair, but, <laughs> It is rewarding and every day is spent so, like in hospital I am just on the ward, just like so high energy, so busy. The day goes by very quickly and you do feel satisfied at the end of the day because you can see that these drugs work for the patients and you can see them go home feeling better and you know you've made a difference in people's lives. So the job is definitely rewarding, which I don't necessarily think you'd get in other professions as much. Another consideration is in community, when I first qualified, this was up north though, not in London, I was offered 15 pounds per hour as a newly qualified pharmacist. And actually in hospital at the time, it was, they offered even less. So it was like 14 pounds an hour for a band six role. But I still took that band six role in hospital rather than the community role. Not that a pound makes that much difference, but basically what I'm saying is I still took the lower salary role because I knew that I wanted to learn more and hospital was gonna provide that. 
knowledge and I think knowledge at this stage for me is priceless like I'm not I don't have children no one's like dependent on me so I chose knowledge and I would always probably choose that option I don't think I could ever sell my soul out and just purely go for something for the money because for me my time is important I want to spend it well and I want to spend it learning so definitely hospital was the better like choice for me another consideration is that the job is essential in particular in times like this such as a pandemic literally there was two places open on the first wave of lockdown in England those were grocery stores and pharmacies and that's when I realized damn like we really are essential and until artificial intelligence might take over our roles that's another video for another day until that happens we are very much needed and my job is as protected as it can be I suppose like given these circumstances a lot of people are losing their jobs no one's job is really that safe but this is just showing me that this job is essential and my role is essential and for that reason I think that although the salary isn't as high that it's worth it I'm still going out like tomorrow we're in lockdown for the second wave and I'm still going out to work every day and I'm grateful that I can go to work that I have a job one last thing is like I said you won't be able to afford a mortgage on this salary in London for a one bed flat maybe possibly for a studio or if you've got like a super hefty deposit but even with quite a big deposit for me right now it's not been possible so just bear that in mind and I'm just giving you realistically what life is like you know living as a junior pharmacist in central London all right so how can you increase your salary well the first way that you can increase it is to get married to a rich man and quit your job <laughs> Basically, the quickest way to increasing your salary in cases such as mine is to study hard and work, work, work on your diploma and get through your diploma as well as possible and then apply for band seven roles. Then you can apply for band eight roles, you know? So there is career progression. So that is the fast track way to, it's not fast track, but like that is the way to getting a higher salary. So it's not just set at that number. Another way you might earn more in pharmacy is to actually leave hospital and go into industry or community. Now with industry, I know that you start off lower, but then you can reach really high salaries like in time. In community, a way you can have a high salary is if you're the pharmacist and also the manager of a store. So I know that starting salaries for community pharmacists in the North as a manager was already on like 45K. In London, it'll be higher. I don't work as a community pharmacist or a manager, so I can't tell you exact figures. But I do know that that is one way that you can get a higher salary. And finally, you can earn more money as a bank pharmacist or a locum pharmacist, which means that you would fill the gaps when you're needed. I think I did a video on locum pharmacy with Patrick, one of my university friends. He, you know, goes around different hospitals and fills in the gaps and he earns more that way. And I think that if I lived at home with my parents or I knew that if I didn't have an income, things would be fine, then I would choose that option because you learn a lot that way as well because you're going to different hospitals and you get different experiences. But because I'm literally, I need to earn money and I need my salary to be stable and I need to know exactly what I'm earning, otherwise I can't afford rent, I cannot go for the somewhat more unstable bank slash vulcan route. But you do earn more that way. And obviously there's, are, there's advantages and disadvantages to uh, like you know working as a local pharmacist for example you might not get sick pay or annual leave per se so those are some ways that you can increase your salary or you can just leave pharmacy and get a job in finance which at times I have been tempted to do but I do really like and enjoy my job and I am very grateful so guys I am aware that you're all wanting me to share the Dropbox which is, has all of my King's College Pharmacy notes but it's taken me way longer than I thought because there's been stuff that's I've saved on my emails and there's stuff that I've saved on my hard drive. So I'm trying to collate all that, combine all that and make all of the module notes like in the right order and stuff. So it's taking longer, but I am working on it. So I hope that you can be patient and be understanding. As you know, I've got a full-time job, so I only film when I have time. We are about to enter into the second wave second lockdown in England so I hope that you all stay mentally sane also if you know people in other professions who are open with their salary or you yourself are open about it then feel free to comment it down below so that people are aware I think students should know exactly what they're getting into and that's why I'm here so I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video bye